and welcome to the evidence and reasons for the Christian faith video channel it is a privilege to join you on this Friday night in 2023 I'm just going to be sharing a testimony uh, a Christian really biography I am firm believer in declaring the works of the Lord it, it gives honor and glory to the Christian God and it serves as an apologetic but it's also something that puts us in a worshipful mood. I'd like to thank all the new subscribers here. This is a Christian channel and it really is a place for Christians to join in fellowship. It is, and, 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 and so fellow believers, uh, particularly those who share the evangelical faith as I do, are, are very welcome here. So <clears throat> today we'll be talking about William Tennant Jr. It might be helpful to consider who William Tennant Sr. is, but uh, for the time being, consider Albert Einstein. He taught at Princeton University. Princeton University. So now let's, let me just give a little bit of background on William Tennant Sr. Let me see if I could find the uh, Wikipedia entry on William Tennant Sr. I was hoping, that, I thought I had it queued up. I, I think maybe I, I lost it somewhere in the shuffle. But William Tennant Senior, Senior was considered the founder of Princeton University, one of the premier universities in the United States, and hence Albert Einstein um, decided to teach there. That was great. So William Tennant Senior was an early Scottish-American Presbyterian minister and educator in British North America. And so it says here he established a religious school in a log cabin that became famous. Imagine that, a religious school in a log cabin that became famous as Log College. He filled his pupils with evangelical zeal and a number became revivalist preachers in the First Great Awakening. The educational influence of Law College was of importance since many of its graduated founded schools along the frontier. Princeton University is regarded as the successor to the Law College. All right, so now he had a son, and one of them was William Tennant Jr. And I'm just going to read this. Um, I, I hopefully I put the the uh, link in the video description if I have and I'll try to remember to put it there. I'm just going to read straight from here. It's a beautiful account. William Tennant Jr. died on March 8, 1777. He had been born 71 years earlier on June 3, 1705. The second son of William Tennant, Tennant, Jr., uh, Tennant Sr. in the county of Armagh in Ireland once William had just turned 13, uh, when William had just turned 13, he arrived with his family in America. Oh, greetings, Patrick Alexander. Greetings, Patrick Alexander. William Sr. was a fiery evangelist who trained his sons to be men of God. He founded the famous Law College, the first Presbyterian theological institution in America. It was later developed. It was later to develop into Princeton University. Here, William Jr. and his three brothers were trained for the ministry despite official opposition. Oldest brother Gilbert led his younger siblings to faith, and they each became famous for their preaching. Brother John endured a near-death experience that crystallized his conversion and gave great zeal to his evangelistic efforts at Freehold, New Jersey. Under John's passionate preaching, people would fall to their knees pleading for God's mercy or sob uncontrollably. Some were carried from John's meetings in a dead faint. At the time of John's conversion, William Jr. was also very ill. William had so intent on passing the requisite examinations by the presbytery that his health suffered. He became like a living skeleton. 
One morning, while talking with his brother Gilbert, William died. He was checked for signs of life and finally laid out for burial. When the young, doc when the young doctor friend who had been attending William arrived to him to find him dead, the young doctor was sure that there were was sure that there were the faintest signs of life, but no one else could detect them. Thus it was, thus it was that an argument ensued between Gilbert and the doctor that delayed the burial for three days. Just when the doctor had stalled as long as he could and William was about to be interred, the dead man opened his eyes and groaned before falling back into a dead sleep again. His body was cold and hard, his lips discolored and eyes sunken but plans to bury him, bury him were put aside. In due course, William recovered, but it was a long process. He had no memory of anything prior to his quote-unquote death and could no longer read or write or speak Latin, which he had used fluently before. Gradually, his memories returned and he regained his full recollection and prior learning. However, he also admitted to a glorious after-death experience. I was accordingly wafted along, I know not how, till I beheld at a distance in an ineffable glory, the impression of which on my mind it is impossible to communicate to mortal man. <clears throat> I immediately reflected on my happy change in thought. Well, blessed be God! I saw an innumerable host of happy beings surrounding the inexpressible glory in acts of adoration and joyous worship. But, did I, but I did not see any bodily shape or representation in the glorious appearance. I heard things unutterable. I heard their songs and hallelujahs of thanksgiving and praise with unspeakable rapture. I felt joy unutterable and full of glory. glory. William was told he had, re he had to return to life, which greatly disappointed him. He woke to hear Gilbert and the doctor arguing and fainted with sorrow at missing the glories of heaven. Heaven's sounds stayed with him every waking moment for more than three years. When he took up preaching for John's uh, freehold revival, then leading it after John's death in 1732, he had great effect as a preacher. His near-death experience fired the imagination of his audiences and gave great authority, authority to his words. Visions and wonderful encounters with God and his word occurred several times in William's life. He had a vision of Christ while praying the woods and was carried back to the night meeting by the church elders where he preached powerfully. Another time he had a revelation of the scriptures and saw God's divinity as he had never seen it before. Thirty souls were converted when next he preached. One of the strangest experiences is when he awoke in the middle of the night to discover that several toes of his foot had been cut off as if by some sharp instrument. The missing digits were nowhere to be found. William Jr. was convinced that the devil himself was responsible. Others have suggested rats were even an accident during sleepwalking. Wow. William and Gilbert had profound impact on the Presbyterian churches in their Philadelphia Synod, promoting pursuit of sound conversion, strong faith, and effective ministry. In the revival meetings which they were devoted to, they avoided anything that was not soundly in line with biblical doctrine, while allowing for visions, trances, and revelations as long as they affirmed the truth and did not draw one away from it. As we common and as we common in Presbyterian revivals, as seen in the Cam Buslang revival in Scotland, people would gather for sacramental gatherings which ran for several days and which sought to affirm a person's conviction of salvation, which was then celebrated by the taking of the communion. In 1744, William used sac sacramental gatherings in Hopewell and Maidenhead in order to create a new church. Another biographical note regarding William is that he was a friend of the poor. 
Reverend William Tennant Jr. died in New Jersey at the age of 72. And for a 15 minute, this is one of my shorter uh, videos. I really didn't have much else to add. Uh, Presbyterians are noted uh, in the present day noted as what they call secessionists, cessationists. And um, I've often said, you know, they're kind of closet non-cessationists. They pray for miracles, and miracles are granted, and I don't know what you're going to do about that. Um, I've been uh, a member in the Presbyterian Church in America for a long time. It's very Reformed doctrine, uh, Westminster Confession, etc. I, I no longer I self-identify as a Calvinist, but if you hear me talk, it's like, well, I do sound like one. I, um, it, I just don't like labels. So, so just... You know, if you ask me if I'm this or that, what is I'm just like, well, I, you know, I'd rather not use labels uh, except that I'm a Bible believer. And um, so th thank you. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad you like that little computer screen background. That's the James Webb Telescope, Patrick Alexander. Long time no see. Happy New Year. I hope you're well, dear brother. And uh, th that's kind of all I had for today and um, I hope you're encouraged and may the Lord richly bless you all so I'm just going to finish off with my usual um, with the uh, the poem this time the poem high flight if I could find it alrighty here we go take care and the Lord richly bless you all slept the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter silvered wings sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up the long, delirious, burning blue, I've topped the windswept heights with easy grace when never lark nor even eagle flew. And while with silent, lifting mind, I've trod the high, untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand, and touched the face of God.